Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to review the first episode of Dark Side of the Ring Season 4, which revolves around the story of Chris Candido and Tammy Lensich. So let's get started. Tammy and Chris's story is everything love story, cautionary tale, success story, failure story. Chris and Tammy, who had been dating since their high school, soared into wrestling stardom based on their talent, ambition, and love towards each other. Everyone who knew Chris, loved him. He was described to have exceptional talent, was natural, and loved professional wrestling. They were seen by everyone as future stars, but as Tammy's stardom rose higher than Chris, their love was put to test. Tammy was considered by many as the first female internet sensation in wrestling, and with every passing day, she took away all the attention from Chris. Unfortunately, a series of injuries and wrong choices sent them in the wrong path. There were substance and alcohol abuse, and there were rumors of infidelity. From once being the cleanest guys in the locker room, one can only imagine what had happened to them. Tammy once said to herself that she will probably die at 36 because she wanted to die like Marilyn Monroe. Chris was as addicted to Tammy as he was with opioids. Tammy's legacy is both a meteoric rise and fall in wrestling. Johnny Candido, Chris's younger brother, believed that all that Chris ever wanted was to win championships and become famous wrestler, even if he died young. Chris has all his wrestling memorabilia in his office. He used to draw wrestling in his spare time. He was called Cook by everyone in his neighborhood. He started Eastern Kids Wrestling Federation. Chris was so fond of wrestling from a very young age that he even made a championship belt out of a platter from somebody's wedding. Mrs. Peggy Ray, Chris's mom, would reveal that Chris and friend would secretly go to Brooklyn and wrestle at a Galician bar and come back by next morning and would behave as if nothing happened. She had no idea that her son was wrestling behind her back. Wrestling was all that Chris had ever wanted to do in his life. It was during one of his matches at Madison Square Garden in New York that he saw Tammy in the bleachers. According to his mom, Tammy was dressed in all white and looked heavenly. Tammy was at that time a high school student preparing for college and was unaware that her life would take a sharp turn soon after. Chris and Tammy were very into each other and his relationship with Tammy became his other obsession. Chris even left his prom date and left with Tammy in her convertible. After he completed his high school, Chris tried to do everything just to get into the wrestling business. He would be on calls, tried to get booked for shows, driving to the shows. Chris wanted to go to Smoky Mountain Wrestling and tried to contact Jim Cornette. Jim Cornette, a former wrestling promoter, revealed that Chris sent him VHS tapes of his matches, and Jim seeing the tapes saw a lot of natural talent in Chris. Jim felt that after bringing him to Smoky Mountain Wrestling, he was not able to pay Chris enough to relocate to another city, while Tammy had no experience in the wrestling business. She would do ringside photography. But still, Jim Cornette felt there was something in Tammy that would make her a big star one day. Jim then had an idea to make Tammy as Chris's manager and do all the talking and promos. But Chris's mom did not want him to leave school, so he applied to the University of Tennessee and got accepted. Chris used to wear a baby bonnet in his initial wrestling days. Mike Foley, a former WWE superstar, felt Chris was a student of the game and he understood more than great moves and matches to be over with the fans. Foley revealed that Chris embraced the role of a bad guy and liked to be a jerk. Although Chris relished his bad guy role, it was actually Tammy who was destined to become the ultimate villain. Tammy in an interview in 2020 revealed she wanted to become a plastic surgeon, but she felt it would be fun to get into the wrestling business and make some extra money and fame. Initially, Jim Cornette gave Tammy some notes to tell in her first interview, and in just one take, she nailed it completely. In the interview, Tammy said she was inspired by Hillary Clinton, and she came to Smoky Mountain Wrestling to file sexual discrimination lawsuit against the company and demanded things like equal opportunity. Naturally, the people were starting to hate Tammy, which showed that she had done her work properly. She leaned into the idea of people hating her, and she wanted to become the first lady of Smoky Mountain Wrestling. As soon as she was on screen, she was on fire. Dr. Tom Pritchard, 
a former wrestler and Chris's tag team partner in WWE, felt that Jim Cornette put her in a perfect spot, as she was very good. Chris always admired Tammy, and they were inseparable since coming over to Tennessee. They were seen as the most romantic couple. Even though Tammy did not want to pursue her career in wrestling, it was surprising that she was becoming more popular than Chris Candido. In 1995, Chris and Tammy got the attention of WWE, and by signing with WWE, the pair ultimately achieved their dream. Jim Cornette genuinely saw their talent and wanted them to succeed wherever they went. Getting into WWE was Chris's ultimate dream, and becoming the top talent there. He was able to achieve success without much influence from anyone. Tammy was always ready to conquer the world, but most people felt that with success, her transformation was becoming dangerous for her. In those days, WWE superstars were character-driven, and when Tammy and Chris arrived in WWE, they were given the role of fitness gurus. They called themselves as the Body Donnas. Chris was the jacked-up guy that worked out, and Tammy was the pretty girl that would exercise with him. Chris even won tag team championships at that time along with Tom Pritchard. Lance Storm, a former wrestler and colleague of Chris, felt he should have been the tag team partner of Chris, but later he was thankful for not being his partner, as the body Donna's was considered to be a rotten gimmick among the fans. Tammy, on the other hand, was gaining popularity day by day. Terry Runnels, a former wrestling manager, considered Tammy an amazing manager with excellent mic skills and overall the best in the business that anyone could possibly ask. Terry revealed that Tammy was the most downloaded female on the internet. Tammy was very gorgeous who transformed seamlessly from a 19-year-old girl to a 24-year-old sex symbol, which timed well with the explosion of the internet usage among people. Tammy was being portrayed as the sex symbol of the company, which brought more viewers from all ages. Initially, Tammy was liked by everyone and was thought to be charming, but those who knew her well, knew that she was different from what anyone could imagine. At that time, the pig farmers Henry and Phineas Godwin, would carry slump bucket and dump the slump on their opponents. Once, while she was taken off as the manager of the Body Donna's group, Henry and Phineas Godwin kept the bucket in the locker room and informed everyone not to put anything in it, as the bucket would be put on Tammy that night. But nobody listened to them, and there were DNA samples from numerous people, which went all over Tammy that night. The reason was said to be because Tammy had heat on a lot of people backstage, and they ensured Tammy's ego was brought to control. Tammy's fame as the first female megastar of WWE skyrocketed, but her rise to fame was plagued by drugs and alcohol. She was soon caught up in the hard, partying lifestyle. During the time when she was starting to have a secret relationship with Shawn Michaels, not many believed the story, but eventually, it started to circulate. Shawn Michaels at that time was a megastar in WWE, who had impressive rivalries with superstars like Bret Hart and winning the WWE Championship. Michaels was said to be very cocky and difficult to work with, and it seemed Tammy had the same issue. In spite of all this, Chris seemed to be unaware of the relationship between Shawn and Tammy. Although, some believed that Chris was aware of it and could not accept it. Tammy may have felt it would be better off with the top guy of the company rather than being with Chris. However, Chris did not react because he was living his dream of being in the WWE, and he was also working with the top star of the company, which could derail his momentum. Chris's brother Johnny recalled once Chris and Tammy had an altercation in a hotel, and Johnny had to persuade his brother to leave the hotel with him to avoid any kind of confrontation with Tammy or Sean. Tammy revealed in 2020 that she was in a seven-year relationship with Chris, and was kind of tired, so they split up for a while, and that is when she was seeing Sean. To this day, Tammy wondered whether Chris knew everything or not. If at all Chris knew all this, he just loved her so much that he ignored it. Chris Candido's talent alone was not enough to make him the top star in WWE, but a serious injury made matters worse for him. In a match at Madison Square Garden, Chris broke his neck. On top of that, he was also enduring pain from the many years of wrestling. It was at this point in his career that he had his first exposure with drugs. Johnny recalled that his brother never used to do drugs or drinks, but due to his broken neck and the intolerable pain, he was forced out of necessity. 
Chris had always been clean and drug-free until this moment, and eventually he used it for pain relief and his emotions. While Tammy was excited on being on top of the WWE, Chris found himself bullied by the toxic culture of the locker room. He was not well liked by some important people in the locker room, and for such guys, life would be difficult to survive. He was clearly frustrated with his injury and irritated by his mid-card status, and this led him to leave WWE and join ECW, which was run by Paul Heyman. The reason Chris joined ECW is because he felt he would be well utilized there under Paul Heyman's control, and he was right. Chris was an old-school wrestler, and his wrestling style was well-liked by the audience. This improved Chris's performance. He continued to use his finisher, the Blonde Bomb, which was one of the main reasons for injuries to his back. Once, he was taken to the hospital late night for severe back pain, and after several scans the doctor asked him his accident report, as the doctor thought he was involved in a car accident. Chris was confused, and it was then that the doctor informed Chris his back was messed up badly. In the 90s, this hardcore style of wrestling resulted in the wrestlers getting crippled in the later stages of their lives, and that fed the drug use that most of the people were already heavily involved with. Muscle relaxers like Summers were popular among the wrestlers at that time, as it provided instant relief from pain and sent them in a euphoric state. Tammy did not have those problems at that time, it was the people she used to hang out with. She used to do it to be socially involved with them. Her popularity in WWE was hit by a sudden obstacle with the arrival of Sable, a new diva that impressed both the management and the fans. Tammy then joins Chris in ECW as his on-screen manager to revitalize her career, but substance issues impacted her performance severely. Even the audience would look at her and instantly realize something was wrong. As their drug use spirals out of control, it became difficult for Paul Heyman to manage both of them. To keep them relevant in the show, Paul Heyman convinces Tammy to film a provocative tell-all video, to which Tammy agreed. Jim Cornette described this segment as utterly disheartening, and he thought Paul did it to get ratings on TV. But looking at it years later, it seemed it did not work at all, in fact, it made matters worse for their careers. As Chris's and Tammy's addictions increased day by day, their domestic lives also escalated to a whole different level. Tammy would hold knives in her hand and chase Chris, and did things that seemed strange. Chris would wrestle, and Tammy would be hanging out with somebody in the back. While serving their suspension in ECW, Paul Heyman would keep them on the payroll by assigning them office jobs, which included arranging travel plans for other wrestlers on the road. Chris would book flights and hotels with his card, and get reimbursed with cash. After some time, he stopped getting cash. Little did they know that ECW was struggling with heavy debts, and the couple were stuck with thousands of dollars in unreimbursed ECW expenses. Ultimately, they ended up in huge debt, and even lost their home. That was really a horrible time for them, and his drug use became worse. The pharmacies at that time were very corrupted, and people could get as many substances as they wanted. One day, Chris and Johnny were waiting in a pharmacy when suddenly Chris got a seizure and coughs blood. They called the ambulance and rushed him to the hospital. Chris had no memory that time, and he was freaked out to be in the hospital. After years of uncertainty, Chris and Tammy received an invitation to join an independent promotion in Puerto Rico, with hopes to revitalize their careers. However, things took a quick turn for the worse. When they reached there, they saw that the conditions were very poor, buildings are in bad condition, no running water, getting hit by 9-volt batteries while walking out of the locker room to the ring, and people throw pee-filled cans and pour over their heads. But access to Summer's drug in Puerto Rico was very easy. Chris would inform Mick Foley that conditions were very bad there, and wanted to get out of there soon. Even Chris felt he needed to change himself. One day, Chris informed his brother that the guys from Indies used to get under his skin, and he used to feel he did not achieve anything in life. Johnny would try to persuade him to bring his career back on track and focus on himself. It was at that point that his love for wrestling overcame his addiction to the drugs. Chris gets clean and undergoes immense training to get back in shape. With Tammy by his side, 
he joins a new wrestling promotion called TNA. He reinvented himself, and is now determined to get back on top of the game. He was as happy like when he got signed to WWE. He even apologized to his brother for seeing so much in such a young age. Chris seemed to become like the Smoky Mountain Candido again. When everything seemed to go in the right direction, tragedy stuck again. While during a match in TNA, there was a camera guy in the ring along with him, and during a move, he tried to avoid the camera guy, thereby falling awkwardly, and he broke his shin. As a result, he could not stand up. He was then taken to the hospital for treatment. All this while, he felt embarrassed for leaving the ring early, and not on his terms. After undergoing a successful ankle surgery, Chris makes a surprise appearance at a TNA event just two days later. He then boards a flight home, unaware of the tragedy that awaits for him. He calls his mom during night, and let her know that he did not feel any good. His mom told him that he should go to bed and take rest rather than flying home. Little did Mrs. Peggy know that this would be the last time she would be able to speak to her son. Chris had even spoken to his brother Johnny, and he seemed fine on the phone, according to his brother. Chris even told his brother that he loved him. The next morning, Johnny received a call from a hospital, saying his brother Chris was admitted there. When Johnny reached there, he saw his brother in the hospital bed, and tried to wake him up. But he realized Chris had passed away. Johnny then went to a church nearby, and said a couple of prayers, utterly saddened by the loss. Dr. Tom Pritchard stated that he was informed by Tommy Dreamer of Chris's untimely death, which came as a big shock for him. Tammy could not believe Chris was gone when the doctor informed her, she thought Chris walked out from the hospital. The doctor explained to her that Chris had passed away due to a blood clot that was formed in his ankle and went to the lungs after the surgery, causing pneumonia. By the time Chris's mother arrived at the hospital, he was already gone. Mrs. Peggy felt she let him down, because if she knew, she could have saved him. She felt sad that Chris could not get the opportunity to enjoy life more, as he had a lot more left to live. Jim Cornette describes Chris as a person who didn't do anything wrong to anybody, and when finally he decides the chance to set things straight in life, his dedication to the wrestling business took his life. Chris could have easily sat at home during his injury and get paid, but instead, he got on a flight right after surgery, which complicated his healing process. A broken ankle had taken Chris's life. A 10-bell salute was given on TNA, honoring Chris's life. Jim Cornette believes if Chris was alive today, he would have been one of the biggest stars in the industry. Lance Storm said the road Chris helped pave is now the road most traveled by today's generation of superstars. As a result, he left a bigger legacy than Tammy, even if she was a bigger star than Chris Candido. Terry Runnels reveals she once heard Tammy say she had no regrets whatsoever. Terry feels that as a human being, no one should say like that and mean them, because mistakes are regrets. In May 2022, Tammy was arrested on DUI and manslaughter-related charges. She killed a 75-year-old driver under the influence of alcohol. She has accepted that she has messed up bad multiple times in her life, and there is nothing she can do about it. Most of the people feel one day she would finally lead a proper life, but at this point, it is not surprising she is always in the news for wrong reasons only. It was surprising to see what happened to the lives of both Chris and Tammy, who were once seen as future megastars, especially Tammy, because she had lost total control of her life. Their legacy is something that cannot be replicated, but could have been more special if not for the path that they chose. On that note, that's all from this episode. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Comment below your opinion about Tammy and Chris, and let us know if you want to see the next episode of The Dark Side of the Ring Season 4 which is based on the life and career of Magnum TA. Thanks for watching. Until next time, see you soon.